A recent New York Times article about Xinjiang claimed that the region has been placing half a million children in boarding schools, teaching them the Chinese language and indoctrinating them to patriotism and loyalty to the Communist Party of China. Sounds quite sensational. But again, what is the real conditions of these schools? I'm right now at one of those boarding schools in Aksu Prefecture to find out. This elementary school is home to a thousand students. 95% of them are ethnic minorities in China. We caught up with some of them during the school's lunchtime. Today, the canteen is serving noodles. Fourth grader Jamila says she likes the food here better than what she has at home. My parents work in a walnut factory. They don't have much time to take care of me. Sometimes I either go out to buy lunch or just have some bread with water. Here at school, we have three meals a day with lots of options like lamb pilaf and fried noodles. Everything is free here for students. Meals, tuition, and textbooks. Three years ago, the local government spent 25 million RMB on renovating the dormitories. That's about 3.6 million U.S. dollars. Additionally, every student receives a subsidy of 1,250 RMB a year. Alkam Almet, a Uyghur student who is in fifth grade, is one beneficiary of these programs. My mom and dad are farmers. They farm all the time. Sometimes I feel a bit lonely at home. At school, I have lots of friends to play with. I just give them a call, and I get to see them every weekend. Unlike in what the New York Times article says, that boarding schools serve as incubators of a new generation of Uyghurs who are more loyal to the party and the nation. The school's party secretary, Luo Zihong, says what it's really about is education itself. She tells me the purpose of having these boarding schools is to provide quality education and decent living conditions to children coming from impoverished backgrounds. What we're doing here is solving the education problem for families in poverty so that their kids don't get left behind. We have both local teachers and those from other provinces teaching the students. Living in a dorm has taught them to be more independent. Many Uyghur parents now realize the importance of empowering their kids with knowledge. They support mentoring education because it opens up many opportunities in their kids' lives. A couple kilometers away is another boarding school. It is a high school built by Hangzhou City in China's eastern Zhejiang province. Students in this room are taking an English class. My name is Aifela. Uh, I'm 17 years old. I'm studying at high school. Uh, my goal is go to Beijing studying languages. Omar is one of the top students in her class. She tells me she's been to Beijing and fell in love with the capital city. She dreams about studying at a Beijing Foreign Studies University. My English has gotten better since I came here. We have video sessions with foreign native speakers to practice our spoken language. Uyghur students work very, very hard. They have clear goals as many want to attend colleges in first-tier cities like Beijing and Shanghai. That's why they are very motivated. They use every chance to learn and improve their grades. Su says thanks to hard work and tailored preferential policies, many Uyghur students do end up in prestigious colleges in the Chinese mainland. As the saying goes, knowledge is power. It has proven effective in lifting people out of poverty. And Xinjiang's education programs are doing just that. So, CGTM, Aksu, Xinjiang.